some news. My name is Mike B, a.k.a. Phony. Today's date is October 29th, 2021. Halloween. You guys expected something different, huh? Huh? I got you. I got you. <laughs> Set y'all up. <laughs> it's a little tight. Not gonna lie. It's a little tight. I'm gonna pull my sleeves out here. <laughs> Fuck. My, my arms are just so big. Jeez. Okay. All right. Welcome, everybody. Today. We've got a whole bunch of shit lined up for us. <laughs> uh, all of your frames? Are your frames fucked? Oh, God. Whew, it's really hot in this thing. Like, really, really, really hot in this thing. Okay. So, today we have a whole bunch of shit lined up. Lots. Lots of shit lined up. Wow, it's really loud in here. <laughs> <laughs> Engage the fans, something more comfortable. That's exactly what this is. Uh, we got, I have categories now for my news. There's like, there's like Twitch and Blizzard and, 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 and all the, co all the common offenders, uh, lined up. <laughs> we got them all today. So first things first category graphics. I know, uh, I did like a blizzard thing, a blizzard news. Oh God. That's what you know. It's bad. We gotta make up. We gotta make a like a, a lower third or something for it. Uh, you're wearing fucking felt, of course. Like, Don't tell me what it's made of. Tell me it's cotton, like really dense cotton. <laughs> Twitch is selling boosts. <laughs> Twitch is selling advertising. We we talked about this, I believe, last. Last uh, episode, talk a little bit about them doing this. They say they were going to just a real, real, re a real quick recap. Uh, they are planning on, or were planning on, uh, releasing a function that allowed people to pay real money to advance placement of a streamer's uh, a stream um, in the feeds, right? It's whether it be to get a top page or get like higher or whatever, higher up in the in the, in the search or the uh, in the category or whatever. Uh, they basically or trying to come up with a system that allows you, the viewer, to pay money to boost a stream. Now, the streamer doesn't get any of this money, okay? So you're paying the advertising fees for placement, basically is what it is, right? I mean, to get featured on the front page, it costs a lot of money, right? Unless Twitch chooses you, or they have some system together that would actually organically promote your stream to people who may find it relevant, you know, maybe, right? But no. Easier to just make you guys pay for it. They know there's a couple whales out there. Shout out some money that the streamer won't see. Now there's two different tests going on right now. Cause at first they said they're gonna postpone it to November. We thought that's it, it's dead. It's never coming back, right? Cause with, there's such huge, huge backlash from everybody saying this is a bad idea. This is a bad idea. Uh, we thought, nah, it's not coming back. And it did. Uh, it's back with a vengeance. No, it's, <laughs> it's back in two different forms. One form is real money. The other form is, uh, uh, is channel points. So for those of you guys who are like, what do I do with my channel points? Well, guess what? We were saving them up for a rainy day. And that rainy day might be here soon. Now, let's take a look at how it works. This right here, it says it's 99 cents. Now, this is not publicly, like, this is not information that's just, like, published anywhere. This is stuff that uh, Zach Bussey, who is the new slasher, um, has uh, managed to dig up. Um, speaking of, we're in a slasher. We just all, like, just, like, just, he just disappear off the face of the earth. And just no one's saying anything. That's cool. Anyway, so, it's 99 cents for 1,000 points. Uh, 297 for 3,000 points. I points, right? He still tweets slasher slasher tweets. I have alerts on for slasher's tweets. Slasher doesn't tweet. He's gone. He's done and not just on Twitch. <laughs> what incentive uh, uh, would they have to organically showcase creators on the platform uh, that don't already fall into their narrow criteria of favoritism? Right? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. 
Yeah. So uh, it says right here. It says, at this time, boost purchases are limited to U.S.-based users who can chat in this channel up to a maximum of $500 per boost. And $500 will get you uh, a whole lot of points. There's no, it says there's no volume discount for this. Um, now, uh, he also found out, it's like, yeah, it's allegedly 100-ish streamers uh, that are in it. And <clears throat> uh, it says that streamers can pay for the boost themselves. So bigger streamers will have the option to pay for it you know, and, and, and boost themselves up to a maximum of $500. Now, $500 is nothing to a lot of big streamers. This ain't shit, right? Uh, pay to win. I know. I know. How did somebody in the game space, like, not see this as a pay to win format? Uh, lots, of, uh, lots of Twitch people talking about jumping to YouTube, which is okay, but kind of sucks. The format isn't very stream friendly there. Well, we'll talk about that in a little bit. Uh, Red, thank you so much. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And so, yeah, they're they're going the they're going the, the boost route. They're trying to get people placement. Uh, we talked about it, I believe, a couple weeks ago. I think we did. In my head, we had a conversation about it, so I'm pretty sure we did. Uh, if not, just read my mind. Uh, it is a very complex system to take money from somebody and advance placement within a like a featured listings uh, uh, a column, well, wherever that might be. Uh, and also, is there some kind of separation or something? Like all this is very very fresh still. We may not see any of this stuff actually make it to live until easily next year easily next year um <clears throat> so you know looking at this like there's a lot of things that can change now the feedback for it from like the from the twitterverse you know basically like people that i you know uh, uh like, like people who streamers or um uh, people i've worked with in the past like they're they're all pretty much against it right and so we see here, this is the creator and stream features. And you can go to the category here. This is on user for twitch.tv slash twitch.user voice. Uh, you go down and you can look at some of the different uh, uh, categories and go and see what kind of ideas they have there. So boost this stream is one of the more popular ones, probably because it's, it's new and it's kind of controversial. And there's lots and lots of people that have, <clears throat> you know, uh, uh, you know, comments to make about some of this stuff, about how better to implement it and all that. And you can vote on each individual one. We've actually gone through here as a stream, as a news, <laughs> uh, and I've voted a couple things in the past, I think. Like, I don't remember what it was, but we jumped on something a long time ago. Uh, by the way, Twitch Research Group has had no opportunity uh, for feedback on this feature. Mm. <sighs> but we've seen, like, I mean, like I said, like, these are not like, it's not like small streamers talking shit. Like, it's like Admiral Baru. Red, your favorite. Actual garbage pay to win that doesn't even support the senior financially. Please remove this. Like, this is the general consensus. The general consensus is in line with this right here. People are upset because the money doesn't go to the streamer. And the uh, and it's a pay to win feature, you know? Like, it's, we don't know enough about it yet. And they're being deliberately, like, uh, 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 secretive about a lot of this. They're just, they're just talking about, you know, just the general outlines of like here's what you could do is what you could spend do, 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 and that's it uh so they're not really giving too much information on it which means that, uh, this is probably still pretty early in its inception could go through a lot of changes as things can typically do um let's uh, see yeah even baru hey no when i saw baru i was like oh dang uh co -car i'm sure co carnage probably hates it too maybe let me see i feel so bad these people who are going to give tons of money and aren't be able to afford uh uh, they, they aren't being able to afford to the system unless they to make it as a streamer. Oh my God. Yeah. Well, we all, we all know it's going to happen and it's going to suck. Even if it's their own fault. Yep. Pretty much. So yeah, this is, uh, this is a pretty, I mean, let's go away. Hold on. Let's go over here. There's actually a couple people in here. I'm sorry. I remember what they said. Cause it's hard to, you hard to actually like research uh, to, uh, um, search some of this stuff, but somebody did say somewhere in here, there is a comment where somebody went in depth talking about how they did get a boost right they use this these are people who have used the system it's in its you know beta form uh they did get the boost one guy said he went from like 12 viewers to like 56 viewers for like 10 minutes off of like points that were spent on his channel not money it was points and so <clears throat> if you think about getting that kind of placement there's some kind of growth you could get from that uh exposure but as many of us know or have heard exposure doesn't pay the bills it also doesn't generate meaningful relationships with your constituents it really doesn't it really doesn't people just see the stream they go click on it and then they if they hang out they're great but then they end up leaving you don't really get a huge return on that especially if it's just a quick burst right you're on the front page boom you got people coming in 
take a glance, and then they leave. <clears throat> the real way to make progress in streaming uh, uh, is to, like, network. Network with people, right? Look at all these streamers, like, especially the bigger streamers who all network together. They're not, like, going solo. They're not single player, play, play the, the whole, like, uh, Twitch experience. They're... They're communicating and networking with people, making videos and all that stuff, and so that's how they end up sharing some of that, uh, some of that demographic, that fan demographic, and they, and they generate meaningful relationships that way. So this doesn't feel like it's going to be very conducive to creating, you know, meaningful connections within the Twitch verse, uh, and it just feels like they're just trying to make some extra money. But how much money could that possibly really be? Like in the grand scheme of things, it's not like Twitch makes any actual money. It's been operating at a deficit forever, right? That's all we understand, right? So, like, what are we really getting out of this except for a ton of, like, really ne negative press? <clears throat> top 100 makes, uh, 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 top 100 make groups like um, OTK. For me, I see this journey, click on it and get an ad, decide to go somewhere else. Yeah, Twitch streamers are the local indie bands of the internet now. <laughs> it's like when you hosted me when I was Legoing. Yeah, well, hosting makes a whole lot more sense. Because, like, hosting, like, I'm sending my people there. It's not, like, a bunch of random people from all over the place, right? That are all just kind of, like, just being randomly funneled in. People who are looking for different types of content that are being randomly fun funneled in. There's no target there. There's nothing there. Um, <clears throat> target brand awareness ads are next to worthless. It's the advertising version of shooting fish in a barrel. There you go. Uh, hosting. <laughs> Sorry, somebody starting a car that took a long time to start. Uh, the test conditions are BS anyways. If the features uh, feature is available to everyone, then the pool of people using it will be far too big for anyone to actually stand out. Hosting a rating works better than this, and it's streamer-driven. Twitch needs a more community-focused way of getting people to interact with folks, but with each other, right? Whether it be through means of, uh, uh, like, they have the Teams thing, they have, um, you know, they have clips that kind of get shared and then like, re like clips is probably their most network friendly uh, feature because you have a clip and then somebody else watches it and then comments on it. Granted, you're not really doing like actual, like it generating interpersonal connections between these streamers to have meaningful connections, right? But still, that's a great way to have some kind of cross pollination between different uh, Twitch uh, 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 streamers. <clears throat> some sort of built-in split screen for collabs would be real neat. Uh, they didn't really use it to its potential. The whole Teams idea kind of died. Yeah. Would you agree that networking still has many requirement uh, for the prior performance before it becomes the valuable tool we're told it is? Would you agree that, you agree that networking still has a minimum requirement of prior performance? I mean, you could, you could. I mean, God. I don't know. <sighs> sitting down and networking with folks, right? Like like sitting down with like Shizzle or Josh or anybody else and uh, streaming with them or creating content with them or inviting them over for like, you know, regular some game nights or podcasts or whatever. Like to me, that's that's networking. Like that's 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 the way networking really works. Uh, split screen uh, collabs are reserved for the partners, which is tragic. Oh, multi Twitch, yeah, multi Twitch. They had four person stream group thing. Yeah, that's right. They did, they did they did do that, but yeah, it's it's just partners. Um, <clears throat> I just feel like there's a lot there's a lot of features that uh, well, I, I want to say there's a lot of features that would make it site better because I don't know what they are, but I'm sure that they have people that are paid millions of dollars who can probably figure this out uh and figure out what works and what doesn't i mean it's not like we haven't had hundreds and thousands of different uh, social media sites that have come and gone over the past 20 years to learn from and see what works and what doesn't i mean look at the biggest ones right now like tiktok and uh i mean and tiktok <laughs> but i mean like there's a reason why some of these platforms are so huge tiktok is massive right twitter is massive facebook is massive so what makes them tick you know facebook is massive because of what probably because of the private groups the private groups is what fuels a lot of their traffic uh that what what about twitter twitter is just like an open forum anyone can get on there and just say some bullshit so everybody does so you get basically get an entire site platform that's dedicated to bullshit really easy to save and to uh to retweet things that you get upset about and then just generate more more uh uh, more interactions uh, and then TikTok is just a whole other beast <clears throat> this algorithm is actually really really good it really is shockingly good uh, watch like audio and Justin is the feature I wanted for years yeah Twitter is yeah by design in echo chamber yeah but interaction and Twitch doesn't really have a lot of that you know we could raid we could raid people probably one of the biggest social 
uh, 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 networking things that came that, that Twitch has inadvertently like put out in the past probably year has been the uh, the ranks that were leaked from when we all found out how much money everybody made in top 10,000. That ranking system, it got people to interact with others by numbers, sure, but it was funny. And like, I mean, we went and raided number what? Number 7776, I think. We went and found him. He was streaming live or something like that. Somebody around my number, my rank. We went, we raided him. And we, I mean, like it was cool person playing like Spelunky or something like that. It was like, cool. Like that's, there's a way to like network there. To find new people. What's even Twitch is doing? <laughs> and that, 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 by the way, that, that extension is broken. So sorry about that. Uh, Twitch has better interaction than YouTube streaming though. Yeah, YouTube. Yeah, we'll, we're going to talk about that in a minute because they have plans. But um, it's like texting your phone number, uh, texting your phone number neighbor. Yeah, 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 exactly. You can make friends on that. What's my take on hype trains? Well, as a beneficiary of hype, tra hype trains, I think it's great. <laughs> I think it's super. <laughs> it feels so isolated hype trains i mean hype trains are great i mean i feel like it just gets people it gets people like motivated to give me money and i'm just like well wow. well wow. <laughs> sounds good uh, i feel like they don't pop up as often anymore i could i could i could change that there's a slider in there somewhere where i could change the frequency at which it occurs uh, i just just, just, <laughs> just slide it back <laughs> cause the hype train the whole day we just had a hype train today that's right we did um so 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 twitch also has some other features they're fucking with right now uh they have a new some people will see this and i actually wonder if any of you guys see this they have a rewind feature a rewind remind me and watch trailer we don't care about the other two we care about the former and that is this rewind feature so again they have another user voice feedback form for this you uh, youtube rewind <laughs> uh, so they have they have a function coming in now we all know we all know and agree and if you don't agree you're wrong that youtube has the best live stream rewind feature available period all right uh so that's a pretty tall order it basically comes down to just do what they're doing. That's what it should be. Just, just do what they're doing. Like there's no point in trying to take a feature and trying to make it better if it works so fucking well. <laughs> that should be your baseline. So here's here is a uh, here's a comment left by somebody who has access to the feature. And I'll read it. It says, I click on rewind two minutes, which is, I guess, a button to rewind for you know two minutes worth, right? And then the VOD loads in. And as we know, VODs and Twitch never work great. Long load time. Then the VOD plays the past two plus minutes. Now, after those two minutes are played, it just jumps back to the live player and doesn't continue where I left the stream. So watching the past two minutes makes me miss two minutes of the live stream I can't watch. Only if I press the feature button again. <laughs> so clicking on the rewind button is just a link to the VOD right now. That's all it is. <laughs> And then if you watch it, you end up fucking missing out on whatever's live. <laughs> oh, man. So, uh, just Twitch, please. Just take it from the guy wearing the whoopee cushion, okay? <laughs> the kids, that's the kid. I had to I had to cut the corners on this thing just so I could fit my fat ass in here. It's Declan size. Just do what YouTube's doing. No one's going to be mad. No one's going to say, oh, you're doing what Twitch is doing or doing what YouTube's doing. I mean, people will say that, but fuck those guys, all right? Because YouTube's doing it right. It's not like some lazy, lazy engineering. Yeah. <sighs> Someone was probably high-fived over that. They're like, oh, man, that's such an easy way to implement that feature. Yeah, high-five. Good job. <laughs> it's literally just a new link, zero new functionality. Yeah, that's all, that's all it is. It's, it's hardly even a feature. But it says over the next month, some viewers may see up to three new buttons. So if any of you guys happen to see these buttons, please test it out yourself and let me know how it goes. Uh, you can say it in Discord or whatever. But yeah, this is <clears throat> something that we have long awaited. Uh, now, there is, there is a concern. Um, uh, Jake and Bake, 
who is uh, 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 one of the one of the original and biggest like IRL streamers. Uh, he says, can we have an option to disable this for safety purposes of IRL streams? So it says here, it says, if you set your VODs unpublished by default, the button won't show, which is true. Uh, but why why would you sacrifice all of your VOD views when... Uh, a feature like this should not really support. Mm. Um, so we'll see how it gets implemented. But right now, it really is just a link. It's just a link that just goes to the VOD. And then if you watch two minutes, you miss two minutes of the live. Uh, and then <laughs> and that's it. It just seems really silly. <laughs> it just seems really, really silly. Uh, so... Speaking of YouTube, YouTube has announced uh, that they have some big plans for 2022. It's November now, October, basically November. So we have, uh, you know, lots of companies are coming out and talking about the stuff they're going to be doing, you know, first, second quarter of 2022. And uh, YouTube gaming is one of them. And so, yes, it says right here they're going to offer gifted subs and raids and all that. Uh, they're going to be, uh, they already know that they have a good overall, like, uh, 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 video delivery system but they want to work on exposure they're going to work on exposure with shorts if you don't know what shorts are they're kind of like um they're like short like videos they're like tiktoks basically uh but more youtube centric right but what here's what ends up happening with these features like reels on instagram you end up getting people who make tiktoks and then just uploading them into whatever this other system is. And so when you watch a reel on Instagram or a short on YouTube, you're probably gonna see the little TikTok logo, boop, 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 doing that thing all over the place. Uh, <laughs> so prepare to see some TikToks in your YouTube streams going forward. Uh, but <clears throat> YouTube shorts are pretty good. I, I like that idea because that TikTok format really does work. It's it's easily digestible. Uh, shit, I mean, I wish I could just go just straight making clips like that. I mean, that'd be great. Just have clips and just upload them all the time. Don't want to worry about like long ass videos. That'd be amazing. Um, oh, you mean Metagram? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I like that though. Metagram. Um, then clips. Clips, which are essentially like shorts that are extracted from actual YouTube videos or VODs, but they're um, not extracted. Uh, you know, it basically links you to a segmented section of a VOD on YouTube. That's how clips work. Similar to if you were to say, how to remove the ice tray in my new Samsung refrigerator, right? And then you would get and put that in Google and then it would pop up a YouTube video where it highlights a specific section. And it will say, this is where they talk about this thing that you asked for. Imagine that, but that's how you operate clips on YouTube where it'll segment out one piece of clips, uh, one clip, uh, clips suck though. I'm all for the long videos. No, but I mean like, you know, it's, 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 it's bonus content really is what it should be is bonus content but there's a lot of people that could probably make a killing just making that content period um it's not like twitch clips it's just a timestamp link to the vod yep like but it's a timestamp it's not timestamp like right now where you go and it starts off in a certain area it actually has a beginning a bookend basically a beginning and an end so yeah youtube says they're bringing a whole bunch of good features they're going to try to focus a little bit on uh surfacing a lot of those clips surfacing a lot of uh, uh of uh shorts and of course making a uh, chat a little bit more bearable like they specifically call that out so the director of uh of of, of gaming content i believe for youtube i put out a video uh mostly for press but uh you can watch it too if you want i'll put the link in the uh in the description I'll drop it in chat, but basically it goes over uh, uh, just different different ways that they're implementing some of these new uh, features over this next year. So uh, people do bloopers and stuff. They edit it from the main video. It's pretty good content usually. Yeah, that's that's what I feel like would work or even like good clips from a video, you know, to get entice somebody to watch a video. Um, he seems young enough to get it. I know. I, I thought the same thing. <laughs> I was like, this guy's the director of gaming. Good. Okay. Okay, cool. But yeah, he goes over, talks a little bit about stats and everything. Um, and yeah, you're right. He does look, he does look young enough to kind of, kind of understand. Like totally. That's so funny. He looks strong enough to get it. <laughs> sure. Um, so yeah, new features coming in 2022. Twitch, Twitch is, is like really, 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 really needing to do more to, um, uh, 
to keep people wanting to stay on their platform because right now like they're hurting you know the hack didn't help the the uh hold us accountable uh bullshit didn't really help the uh the random algorithm based bans of certain of of some uh streamers like completely wholesome streamers um like that shit is not this is not benefiting them in the long term by any stretch um yeah, it needs to. What do you say? He's not wearing a blaze over gaming t-shirt. Sorry, he's unrelatable for me to trust him. God damn. Dude, Gabriel, you're a fucking genius. That's exact. Wow. I was I, I was that person. I was that person. <laughs> I was doing the same fucking thing. That's so funny. <sighs> the fucking uniform. And blue jeans. <laughs> Anyways, so. Yeah, move on. Twitch needs a competition. They do. They do. They need a competition. They need. Um, yeah, they, they just need somebody to uh i don't know man i mean tim the tap man left dr lupo left dr lupo was supposed to be like the face of twitch for a minute there last year and then that didn't work out instead of going to youtube full-time uh and youtube keeps putting in all these features that like are you know they're they're gonna they're enticing in the long term it'd be nice for me as a streamer it'd be nice if i was on like three different platforms if i could just have everything on fucking youtube i'd be pretty much i'd be pretty happy with that right but it's not the way it is T90, uh, the biggest AOE streamer left. That's right. They, he did last week or two weeks ago or something like that, right? Yeah. Yeah. You're, you're the one I know that from because I don't know anybody else that watches AOE content. <laughs> but thank you. <sighs> Do you guys suffer from blue light damage to your skin when you're having long gaming? Sessions. Do you? <laughs> oh God. Oh jeez. <laughs> what? 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 I didn't even. I didn't. I didn't. You guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> she. <laughs> <laughs> Let me introduce you to some topical, topical, topical solution that'll take care of that for you. Call reflect, or or reflect. So reflect is a uh, is a, uh, a, a a a type a top of topical solution that you would put on your skin to help protect you from the the violent blue light that comes from your mind. I'm surrounded by monitors right now. Just push, just, just coming down on me. I can't I can't get away from it <laughs> with this gaming lotion now listen okay when you say it like that when you say it like that is that why you look so old I know it's all this blue light man it's all blue light so is a product that is co-founded and uh by uh Valkyrie who is a uh, who is a massively popular streamer? Uh, also, I believe the like co-owner of Hundred Thieves. Um, so somebody who is pretty well off, pretty well off, um, and you would think would probably have their shit together in terms of like doing. I hate saying doing their own research, but you know, doing some research on stuff. So this company behind. Uh, reflect uh, this uh, topical solution. Reached out to Valkyrie and uh, Valkyrie, and they've been working on this product. She, they showed her these metrics they came up with, these studies they did, these all of this stuff. This is groundbreaking shit. Did you know that this blue light was so violent? Did you know? Probably didn't. And the reason why is because it's not. But she didn't know that. She was suckered into it. She fucking suckered into it. Scroll down to the very bottom here. Here she is. It's a promotion of the product in two days, 1019. Reflect Valkyrie. Is it really odd that 100 of these who are genius marketers would result in a person marketing this? Yeah. Yeah, it is really odd. Yeah. Uh, good thing I have bad monitors that are bright enough to tan. <laughs> People who do research are not the target demographic. Yeah. So, <clears throat> uh, my heart is beating so. Oh, this tweet is still. Okay. Okay. I'll just say most of the tweets have been deleted because once this was actually released, it, it got a huge amount of backlash because people were like, well, hold on a second. 
that's not really a thing. Like, it's not really something you have to necessarily worry about. Is there blue light coming out of your monitors? Sure, yeah. Are they going to damage your skin and give you skin cancer? No. Are they going to hurt your eyes? Hey, yeah, probably. But we already have gunners and lots of other yellow lenses that help us with that. Also, there's like a there's like built-in features, like eye comfort features in like every monitor and Windows and Mac OS. No one cares. But it's basically on everything. So we've pretty much solved that problem with the eyes. We need to find something else to get really concerned about. And so this is that this is the angle they're going with. You could see, um, actually, I don't know. It was, it was my mom's a nurse, and it's kind of questioning this when I told her I wanted it. Where does it say blue light? Is, the, is that bad? Uh, it, how does this work? Just looking for evidence to show my mom so I can buy. Save your money and buy something more useful. Uh, if we go to the actual website, I thought we'd find some information there. Um, make, sure, make sure we're at the root. This is root. So... Nothing here. Uh, <laughs> the makeup business is kind of, yeah, in general, I would say the makeup business is kind of sketchy. Who is that? Wow, what's your name? Shit. Uh, 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 she played, she played, uh, um, uh, uh, what's her name? Penny, Penny something? Oh, shit. Uh, it's from Tony Stark's girlfriend, fucking Iron Man, man. And she, she, her, she came up with her own, like, skin cream or something like that. It is like, gloop, that's right, goop, gloop, whatever. Basically, there's been a pretty significant influx of uh, of celebrity endorsements of un untested or uncertified or whatever unproven products. Uh, Gwyneth Paltrow, thank you. It's a lifestyle brand. The vagina the vagina candle lady, yes. <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow. Um, <laughs> so yeah, there's been a lot. I mean, there's always been, right? You think of like if you're like a kid in the '80s or something like that. Like you remember seeing like uh, uh, um, Cindy Crawford or something like that. Like you know talking about some kind of skin cream or some shit. Uh, it's always, that's always been the case for, you know, celebrity endorsements of whatever products across all of makeup, all of makeup industry uh, as a whole. But when you're getting into untapped territory, like you are with like blue light coming out of your screens, you should probably take a second, uh, try to take a, take a second look at some of the data here. I mean, she sells dildos and stuff. She shows a lifestyle brand. What? Good pop, oh Yeah. Uh, I think this is just an influence getting caught for doing uh, for not doing the research. Yes, it's exactly what happened. Black man. Uh, so, so she faces backlash of new gamer skincare uh, range. She's not responded to the criticism. So she responded to the criti cri cri criticism uh, in a uh, in a very long video where she talks a little bit about uh, uh, a little bit of everything. And it's not the most it's not the most well put together video. Clearly, she just fired up, fired up the camera and just. Uh, just kind of like word vomit. Not all of it comes across as being very supportive of her case. She does a lot of blaming, shifting blame and all that. I think in general, she's just really embarrassed that she got caught up in all this thing. Uh, there's a lot of quotes here that are pretty good, you know? Money. I don't need money. <laughs> and... Some people like, oh, she could have just done a regular skincare thing. She could have just done more merch. You're right. I can literally just straight up retire and have enough money to take care of myself and my family for the rest of my life. This wasn't about money. It was more so like I saw their research and I was really excited that that they wanted me to be involved in something that's felt revolutionary. Like I don't. So... <clears throat> I mean, obviously, obviously, the memes are out of control. Said, right here we have uh, Daphne39 Dash. She says, I'll be launching my own gamer product, the cum resistant keyboard. Uh, <laughs> she has some good ones. Uh, but Daph also apparently has like a doctorate in like skincare or something. Uh, and so she went over, and this is actually a really oh, interesting watch. It's, it's, it's 10 minutes long. But it's very interesting. She clearly knows what the fuck she's talking about. She goes over like all the on the ingredients on the website that now doesn't exist, right? And so this is just I'll just I have a clip here. I don't actually know what I clipped here, but just so you can hear it. They make you more sensitive to sunlight. Now, if you look at their other products, you would assume obviously that you use one, you use the next. But then this one doesn't have SPF. So if you use that cleanser, don't have SPF, you could be fucking over your skin more. And again. 
I, it's the same thing. I don't know what this is. Delivers essential blue light defense. <laughs> Special magnetic crystals. Yeah. Shield your skin with essential everyday blue light protections for all your screen time. Prevents future damage with hydrating and strengthening. It. So she goes over basically everything. And, and by the end of this video, you're like, wow, like how, I mean, obviously now hindsight's 2020, right? But now it's like, how did you, how did you even fall for this stuff? Um, for, in Valkyrie's defense, you get, you get approached for something. So what you think is revolutionary, right? And you can't talk about it. She said that the studies in the video where she's talking about it here, Don't. she talks about, she talks about how she felt like she's like, I got scammed. I, they said that they don't, they can't release the studies because it's proprietary. And so she couldn't even talk to it with to talk about it with anybody. Uh, the cream is really just mining crypto. <laughs> yes. <laughs> this is a scam to drain people of money. Uh, <laughs> do, you have to, do you have to charge them crystals? <laughs> This is fungi crystals. Uh, so yeah, she's, she talks about how she definitely got taken, right? She got taken, but she can't talk about it because, you know, she was under contract NDA. So she couldn't really cross reference with friends who would probably look at it and say, don't fucking do that. But she talked about, you know, she said, she says here, she says, uh, single one of my friends or anyone that I know on the internet asked me, Hey, Ray, what happened to the website? Why is there no information on the site? Not a single person. A lot of people reached out and asked, like, are you okay? So, I mean, she made the deal herself. You know, like, you make the deal yourself. I mean, she's the co- She's the co-owner of 100 Thieves. You know, like, this is an L for her. Right? I, fe I, I felt like, you know, people like her and, like, Pokey who's allegedly a ruthless businesswoman, I felt like they probably have their ducks in a row. This is a huge L for her, for sure. Uh, didn't even get lawyers involved? I mean, apparently not, you would think, but apparently not. Uh, she got scammed and, she, and, and is taking the brunt of it. Oh yeah, absolutely. So this thing is, she's trying to get out, I'm sure she's trying to get out. All the tweets that she made related to this product are deleted. Um, so <clears throat> yeah, she's definitely trying to wipe the slate clean and start over. But for somebody who has a whole lot of control over their brand, like that's that's this is all this is a huge like hurt for her. Like she's got to take a break for a bit. Um now she could be 101 thieves. Dang! So moral of a story, make sure any NDAs leave room for professional consultation. That's perfect. Um Pokemon uh now owns Evo. Yeah, we're gonna talk about that too. So uh yeah, so Val Valkyrie is in a really, really, really bad state spot and it's funny because when i saw when i saw this i was i was just on reddit like this is like the like the same day that i was going over this news uh and i was on reddit and i see <laughs> i follow r slash asian halves and at the very top of asian halves was uh was valkyrie i was like oh shit <laughs> it's like hey man take the w you can get it man <laughs> so yeah <laughs> just popping up all over the place pokey definitely has business sense oh yeah so Pokey, speaking of Pokimane, speaking of Pokey, she has launched a new talent management and brand, uh, talent and brand management uh, 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 consulting firm. Heavy blue filter on that pick, though. I better get my skin cream out. Uh, and it's called RTS.GG. Yeah. <laughs> Real time strategic consulting. <laughs> <laughs> dot gg that's a good url for sure see uh talk creator opening her own talent agency is basically par for the course it really is this is not this is not that dissimilar for what you see uh uh like people in in the movie industry you know they'll go into they'll do like uh you know casting or they'll do something production related they'll start off as actors then they'll be producers and then executive producers then they'll be directors and they're gonna be whatever like this is not this is not you know too dissimilar from how other companies, uh, other industries uh, function. Uh, what happens if you mix Reflect Cream with Bill Defa's Belt Water? Oh. The VTubers do this all the time. PewDiePie did it himself, like what five years ago? Yeah, yeah. This is this is a pink eye. <laughs> yeah, this is this is a pretty common uh, uh, trajectory for most 
most content creators they go they go this route uh they start helping managing other people i mean josh yo josh and i talked about doing this fucking years ago years ago we talked about i think right after i left zam uh we were talking about doing something like this uh now this is uh, the scale of this is so much bigger than what josh and i were talking about doing okay like this is huge um uh, <clears throat> she has i mean down here we look at the bottom of the team and there's a number of people here. Uh, you know, Stuart Saw, who is the CEO. Uh, here's Pokey. She's the uh, she's the creative, uh, the the chief creative officer, uh, which is which is which is a made up position, just so you guys know, because I was almost chief creative officer of Zam, uh, and I knew very well that it was pretty much a made up position. It's just the face of the company. Uh, but uh, you know, Kim Fan, I mean, these are familiar faces. Sue Lee Smix. If you watch any any StarCraft in the past ten years, you're probably are familiar with Smix. Uh, she's hosted. <laughs> tons um i see some ex bliss people on there maybe maybe there might be a few uh that roll up there with chief Ex chief experience officer yeah exactly yeah uh it's not i mean i'm not trying to downplay her involvement with this but she's definitely a face of the company especially if you look at the original company roots here which is when sony interactive uh, acquired um so, and new season adventure RTS jointly acquired the evil. Da, da, da. So this in this in this write up, there's no mention of Pokey anywhere in here. Now I don't know when she came on board to be part of this, you know, this venture. Um, but everything here just talks about the the company and the uh, uh, the, the the founder, the CEO, uh, Saul Stuart Saul. Um, so I feel like they probably brought Pokey in, which is smart uh, to bring her in as the face to help basically generate some buzz, and it did. It generated a ton of buzz. Um, uh, I mean, Pokey is one of the biggest, most recognizable faces of uh, uh, on, of streaming. Uh, if you go, if you, if, if you go to Streamlabs, one of the largest sites to uh, to do. Hold on a second. Okay, cool. Like her face is right there. You know, this is one of the Streamlabs is one of the biggest sites to anybody who's streaming. Pokey, who? See now you just now you see now now you just now you just fucking around. So so yeah, she's 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 definitely no. This is a face you want to get involved in whatever it is that you're working on. Uh, and at StarCraft Two, it pays to be fluent in Korean. It basically got Smix made. Oh yeah, uh, Pokey's face on YouTube thumbnails generate higher views. What's uh what's her number though? Oh yeah, what is her number? <laughs> <laughs> what is her number? Uh, so yeah, this is this is uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So having her face involved is is definitely worth it. Now this also it's also like kind of makes her co-owner of Evo. Now Evo has changed over the years. E Evo is a it's a fighting championship, right? It's it's all about the, the FGC fighting game community. Uh, uh, it used to be, you know, smaller grassroots type they have they held it in vegas every year kind of thing um there was some controversy that occurred uh, i don't know the details of it but what i read seems like something i probably should read more about before i talk about it so i'm not gonna talk about it we'll just say some controversy um and uh people want their name associated with evo yeah i have a feeling you know what the controversy is <laughs> I'm not totally familiar though. Uh, so uh, what ended up happening was the brand ended up falling apart, and so Sony picked it up. All right, or Sony and uh, and RTS picked it up. So now now Pokey has somehow managed to land herself in as a, a joint founder of uh, uh, of um, or joint owner or whatever of uh, of Evo. Now I don't know what the future of Evo looks like because Evo Online, from what I've read, did not really go across very well, and it was the first time they did anything online. But they did it at the same time everybody else is doing online stuff. Last year, um, I had quite the controversy last year. Yeah, exactly. So I, uh, we'll have to wait and see how this develops. But for the most part, it seems like you know this is this is typical trajectory for a content creator. Good, get her out there, get some people. I mean, shit, if they can get brand deals for streamers like me, you know, like people who are at my level right now, I think that'd be great. That'd be great. Help people, help the mid and small, small streamers get started. The only way we're going to know if this actually works, if this uh, new venture she's starting on is actually going to have any kind of fruition, is probably a year down the line when we have people coming out and saying, you know, I joined, you know, Pokey's RTS uh, uh, management firm or whatever, and this happened, uh, whether it's good or bad. That's the only time we're really gonna know. Yeah, the proof is in the pudding. Someone's got to get in there, take the take the bullet, and uh, uh, and see how it benefits them. But 
We'll have to wait and see. I I I I have faith. I have faith that historically these things never really work out the way you really want them to. It's it's because what happens is people go to these companies and they think the company's going to do all the work for them, and so they sign up for all this stuff. They don't don't do any of the work themselves, and then and then in the end they're like, well, they didn't they didn't make me as popular as PewDiePie. They didn't make me as popular as XQC. It's like, well, you didn't put in the work, or maybe you just weren't that likable. <laughs> You didn't get that Alienware deal? Uh, did you see the chair they sent to all their people? No. Did you see my chair? I got a new chair. I'm good. Well, it's all mesh. Oh, so my butt can breathe. I would be dying right now if I didn't have this chair, actually. Also pretty good. It's like oh, nice and soft. Oh, man, not soft. Meshy. Right? What is mesh? What is like a like a like a hammock? It's like a hammock for my ass crack. It's really cool. Um anyways. Speaking of Speaking of talent acquisition. Blizz is cleaning house. At least, at least that's what you know we, we think. We don't we don't we don't have any names or anything. But twenty people allegedly have been let go, uh, and twenty plus more are facing disciplinary action. Why is she not one of them? I know. Why isn't she not one of them? This is like a fucking torture. Sympathize all this shit, man. Um, well. Maybe she's the last one to go. Maybe she's the last one to go. She's got to she's got to clean up her mess and then and then she'll be the last one. No, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Good things don't happen to 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 bad things don't no. Bad things don't happen to bad people. That's what it is. Yeah. Um so oh, we 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 know a few. Um I don't want to say any names or anything because, you know, there's a reason why they don't release those names. It's so they could get a job somewhere else and nobody will be the wiser. It's like cops, right? So, we know that there's a good handful of people that are being fired over this. Uh, uh, there's other changes that are coming down over the past month or so. We've seen, you know, any kind of like remote, any remote innuendo that happens in, that's happening in World of Warcraft is removed from like quest lines and player names to item names to whatever. Uh, that stuff's all being removed. Um, <laughs> uh, McCree had his name changed. Because Jesse McCree was somebody who was uh, an, a real person. Uh, and they were called out as being an offender in this lawsuit against Blizzard. Um, but they added a cat. Oh, yeah. Well, what well, was that? Cowboy and Overwatch. Yeah, there you go. Uh, so they're changing the name to Cole Cassidy. And it says right here, it says, The first thing a renegade loses is their name. And this one gave up his long ago. Running from his past meant running from himself. And each passing year only widened the divide between who he had been and what he had become. But in every cowboy's life, there comes a time when he has to stop and make a stand. To make this new Overwatch better, to make things right, he had to be honest with himself and his team and himself. The cowboy, he was rode in the sunset and Cole Cassidy faced the world at dawn. Please don't try to sound Southern. Is that Southern? I'm just like making squeaky voices. Uh, is that what Southern people sound like? <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> yeah. They changed They changed his name. So McCree's no longer McCree. It's Cole Cassidy. Uh, Twitterverse calling him out as usual. As usual. Johnny Sins would have been a better name. <laughs> no, you did not. <laughs> Uh, I see. Probably one of my favorite takes. If you play Overwatch, still McCree is my favorite. Oh, I'm so sorry, McCree. It's Cole. What? My real name is Cole Cassidy. No one's gonna get this unless you watch Tangled, the best Disney movie, the best Disney animated movie. None of y'all watch this shit. Y'all gotta get cultured. Get cultured. Fuck. Anyways, so Cole Cassidy, 20 people being let go. Bobby K taking away his own pay with money he'll never see. Bobby K is changing, or sorry, is uh, reducing his pay to the, uh, I believe, 62500 minimum for his position. This is down from hundreds of millions of dollars. Um... This also includes any kind of bonuses, all that shit. So all of his incentives and everything supposedly are all on hold until they get 
until he gets his shit together. So it says, according to a letter shared on the company's investor page, he asked for his pay to be cut down to here to 62500 with no bonuses or compensation on top of his salary until they have, quote, achieved the transformational gender-related goals and other commitments. So he's reducing his pay to basically nothing. $62,000. Uh, basically nothing. And, and, and includes stock vesting. Who kn That part, I don't know. He saw about bonuses and incentives and all that, and it's a very complex system, a very complex system, uh, with with how their pay works. But we should note, we should note that he did just get paid 155 million dollars, not necessarily all at once, but he did get approved for this pay back in June. Uh, it says because he uh, he pockets whopping 155 million dollars following a contentious vote. So what is this vote? Well. Uh, there is a uh, there is a system called. Let me pull this up real quick. Uh, pay to fuck. What was it called? Basically, the shareholders vote to uh, uh, to lock in the pay of certain C level associates, right? And in general, the vote is usually pretty overwhelmingly one sided. You know, it's like people are either going to agree that he gets paid this much or disagree that he, that he, you know, he shouldn't get paid this much. Um, and in this case, the vote for him to get paid this exuberant amount of money, this insane amount of money, we've talked about several times on the show, uh, was 54% of shareholders. Now, at the bottom here, CTW, which is a which is an entity that's, that's basically working to influence some of these shareholders to vote against his pay because his pay is fucking stupid. Right. Um, it says here, it says uh, with only 54 percent of the of votes cast in favor, the proposal nearly failed to receive a majority support. And it appears Activision did just enough arm twisting before for the measure to pass. Most importantly, keep in mind that say on say on pay, that's what it's called, say on pay votes in the 50 percent range are extremely rare. Less than 4% of companies in the broader Russell 3000 index receive support that low, and the average support for say on pay proposal in the, in the S&P 500 is 88.6. So he's already just barely skirting by with the amount of money that he's already being approved for. So somebody already said this is probably his way to keep from getting being shown the door, right? It makes sense. Like, he's... He's cutting his pay so that next year when he asks for asks for his money back, asks for his payback, they might be a little bit more lenient and give it back to him. But when you're operating where like almost 50%, half of your shareholders are voting against you getting paid some stupid amount, that is a that's problematic. Like we already know his pay is problematic in the hundreds of millions from different sources. Like we already know that's 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 not that that's that's an element of a much bigger picture and a problem with uh uh with capitalism with just like which is i want to say america just in the world in general we'll say um and to have that kind of discrepancies uh, uh is he barely getting by three thousand a year nah he saw the writing on the wall and jumped first that's right absolutely absolutely so yeah he jumped on it so that he's not really worried about the right now he's not worried about money Definitely not. Don't forget that Jeff Bezos' salary is only eighty-seven thousand, and it has been for decades. Salary doesn't mean shit. If King ever stops being a money maker for them, he's done. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is this is like Blizzard's problems are not over. They're not going to solve this just by cutting his pay or um, uh, or putting out some nice press releases about some nice things they're doing for their employees uh, or having a few. You know, employees at gunpoint come out and say, I really enjoy working at Blizzard. It's been lots of fun. And they've made lots of changes to make me feel better about about myself or whatever, right? <laughs> that's all that's coming. All that's coming. But on November 2nd, which is next Tuesday, there's going to be an investor call. And from that point, we'll probably hear a little bit more about what their plans are, uh, what their reaction is to what's happening right with all this stuff that's happening um and we got a lot of good information so november 2nd tuesday yeah tuesday if i can if i could get on if i could get on early enough i'll try to hop on and uh 
stream it or something like that, or at least record it. But that's something that we should definitely cover and talk about. We did it before with the with the earnings call a couple of years ago. This is probably going to be one of the more, one of the more interesting ones uh, to happen in recent years. We know for a fact that a lot of people have been bailing on World of Warcraft just within this community, right? You could blame it on Final Fantasy XIV. You could blame it on New World, whatever. The numbers for WoW have like tanked, absolutely tanked. Um, cookie click, yeah, Cookie Clicker, <laughs> Cookie Clicker keeps pushing them down the ranks, man. Um, they're probably just having all the new IPs on Activision proper and slowly grandfather the Blizzard name. Probably no, that's good. That's a good point to make. Yeah, those game numbers are in the dumpster for sure. Yeah, so we'll see. We'll see what they disclose. We know that they don't talk about actual subscriber count. We don't talk about actual subscriber numbers. So we we'll are have to wait and we'll, we'll, we'll probably get um, just a real generalized look at like what their, what their, what their earnings are, uh, a generalized look at like what their monthly active users are. They stopped using subscribers, they got monthly active users. Uh, so we'll be able to compare those numbers and see what they're, where, you know, where they're at. Um, and also we'll probably get some insight into, I oh, know they're not gonna talk about pay or anything like that. That's, that's more, it's more internal stuff. Uh, but we'll probably get a lot of insight into like some of the steps that they're taking to protect uh, uh, you know, some of the marginalized communities that work with them, they, they, they're under like part of their, uh, of their ongoing, uh, efforts to reform blizzard, uh, or rehabilitate blizzard is to also fix the discrepancy, uh, between, you know, uh, uh, uh women and men inside of, uh, uh, you know, inside the workforce. Now this is a slippery slope, right? You just can't let women have jobs. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a slippery slope because in California, we're pretty fucking liberal here, right? Gender doesn't really, doesn't really hold a whole lot of bearing on a lot of things. Okay. Sure. There's a lot of areas that still do, but with like younger folks, gender doesn't really have a lot of weight to it. Okay. <laughs> and clits. <laughs> gender doesn't really have a whole lot of weight to it. So when you, when you have to come up with a plan that says we have to, we have to hire an equal number of of blank gender and blank gender you're kind of you're kind of like like you how does that work when there's gonna be a fucking zillion kids a zillion zoomers growing up who don't have a gender how does that fall into your plan how does it work i have no idea <laughs> this is a very nuanced discussion that I think Blizzard is gonna, they're gonna find a way to, 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 to smooth this over and then it'll be stuck again in the future when like, when there's a whole nother set of, 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 of kids, they're kids now, uh, start working and they start looking at some of the workplace things like, well, hold on, it's like, this doesn't really support me. I'm a marginalized member of this company. And then shit starts happening. It goes down from there. Uh, yeah, EEOC is not looking forward to those requirements. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah, equal, equal, equal employment opportunity is is oh has always been very focused on the genders right because for the longest time it's women were the ones who are always left behind when it comes to like tech jobs uh and so at, well women and uh persons of color right and so and we see it all the time we've always seen it you know right it's either it's either all white dudes wearing gaming shirts and blazers or like japanese dudes right <laughs> There's just, this is historically there hasn't been a lot. And so EEOC and other mem other uh, uh, organizations are always fighting to try to bring a little bit more evenness to it. Um, but how that works in a gender fluid future, I don't know. That's, I'm sure they know it's coming. I'm sure they know it's coming. Um, <laughs> that's discriminatory right there. Make Azeroth great again is already a thing, S Fan does. <laughs> They threatened to move to Texas. I do I know they fucking threatened to move to Texas. What? <laughs> oh God. Yeah, that'll that'll solve your your sexual harassment problem. Move to Texas. Get the fuck out. Uh, can your team all identify as X this month to fix our numbers? <laughs> no, but that's seriously. This is something that's gonna happen. This is actually. You guys know this, right? Like this is really something that's gonna happen. I'm like, I understand that I live in a bubble. California is a very different place than a lot of the world, right? But what we do is we raise kids and then we ship them out to your state so they can fuck up your shit too and bring y'all into the 21st century, okay? And so these kids, they don't, they don't recognize any genders, man. They don't, you know? They get to the point where they're like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, today I'm feeling like blank. Today I'm feeling like blank. And that's just how they operate. And because all the kids are in on it, it's... 
the hip thing. And what happens is those hip things end up becoming the norms. And then the norms start to in, start to infiltrate your workplace. Then you have articles like the one I saw the other day. 37, 37 year, I'm a 37 year old manager. I'm afraid of my 22 year old employees. It's because you're living in a different world. <laughs> Because it's, it's, you had to recognize the change. California got rain and wind last week. That's right, we did. <laughs> California is ahead of the curve. Yeah, well, not everyone would agree with that, but uh, yeah, but I, I do believe it's true. I do believe it's true, absolutely. Um, so yeah, there's gonna be a lot of changes to the workforce over the next. Like, this is like twenty. This is a twenty-year discussion, by the way, right? But it's gonna it's gonna start happening. And don't worry, we'll politicize the shit out of it. We'll find some way to just really take it to the fucking extreme. All right. So, Socially Cali is definitely on the bleeding edge. Yeah, I'm not trying to toot my own horn or anything like that, but I mean, I, I've witnessed a lot of stuff out here that I don't see anywhere else. You know, like, people wearing masks. <laughs> All right, so, moving on. The Nintendo Switch received, Nintendo Switch Online received an update. Uh, an update that added the N64 emulation. Now, now, it's not particularly good. So there's a channel here. I watched, I watched this video. Very informative. This is somebody who knows a lot about N64 emulators. And uh, he's, his general, yeah, his general consensus by the end of this is that the emulation sucks. Uh, there's, there's volumetric fog issues. There's, um like weird texture issues that occur uh probably these are all like emulation problems but like from a from a feature standpoint some of the things i was reading you can't you can't remap buttons right uh so if you remember the n64 you have like a middle thumbstick okay and then you have and then you also have like a, a left d-pad so it's kind of a funky controller so everybody will adapt to that differently depending on you know how they play what game they play, and also uh, uh, um, how they play, what games they played on the N64. So yeah, here it is right here. Um, here he's demonstrating the latency. He's saying that the latency on uh, on the emulation on the on the Switch emulation is worse than the latency on the uh, <laughs> on the Xbox emulation that he had. <laughs> so yeah, he has an Xbox. He's playing it, and he says the emu the, he says this emulation here is better. Uh, also. Not only can you not remap buttons, but you cannot uh, save your progress. So if you think about a game like, uh, if you think of like Star Fox, you could probably play all that in a single sitting, couple hours, right? Um, but if you think of like, if you think of like Mario Kart 64, like that's, this is a lot <laughs> of gameplay <laughs> and you can't save because there's no recognized memory pack or expansion pack, whatever. Um, they're trying really hard to sell the terrible retro controller, just like with the Smash GC controllers. The hardware isn't as good as the original as well. Yeah, that's why I know we. It's why uh, it's why anybody that emulates a lot of games has a twenty dollars USB N64 controller. Yep. How can you call something uh, the expansion pack but not emulate the expansion pack? Yep. Oh, oh Karina Tile with no saves. Yeah. Uh, it has save save states now though. Well, I don't know. I don't know how. I know how the save states work with uh, NES and SNES emulator because I have it on my Switch, but I have not tried it on uh, on here. Uh, but still, you know, having a regular save would be great, but uh, whatever. Um, yeah, it has the same save state system. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, but yeah, amongst other things, you know, he talks about the fog effects. Like, this is the fog effects correctly implemented here. You can see fog off in the distance. Uh, and then he switches over to uh, uh, to the switch. And then you can see that the fog is basically everywhere. Uh, so it doesn't really render it correctly. Um, so... One day Nintendo will offer an online service that isn't peer-to-peer. Uh, -peer. Yeah, yeah, and that's the other thing too is that their their multiplayer is also very poorly implemented. It's just like yeah, so it's, it's not the experience that you wanted for sure. Here's where he did, yeah, he not necessarily demonstrates. Not really good. Uh, there's a couple of instances here where you can see some frame locking, uh, but overall though, it's like really hard to pick up that there's uh, any severe issues. But you can see at the bottom here, it says your connection is unstable. It keeps popping up. Your connection is unstable, uh, so the audio may be interrupted. Here you can see a little bit more uh, uh, how the, the, the frame drops and the lagging and the latching and all that stuff is impacting actual gameplay. Um, 
But yeah, there's only been like a group of developers creating proper six frame for like 15 years. When how long do you tend to catch up? Yeah, exactly. So if you're paying for the service and you're looking for, you know, a, a, a high quality emulation on a Switch, it's just not there yet. It's just not there yet. Um, you're better off just getting, I mean, just get an Xbox and just, or X, you know, whatever, and then and putting uh, an emulator on there. Or actually, I think you can um, homebrew it onto your Switch and probably get a better experience too. Just homebrew your own. <laughs> your own emulator into uh into the switch um yeah there you go what what, what Aner said see see there's yeah there's already emulation uh right on general switch yeah i i actually i'm looking forward to uh i want to go and put homebrew on my shit does that brick your shit for online probably not huh i know initially they, i was worried about it because they said that it could brick your uh online support for uh for switch but uh so general is definitely showing its age first party games like mario golf at fps with local multiplayer yeah Yep, 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 yep. Um, on the the HP you know, emu on the Wii was great. Yeah, is it was it really good on the Wii? I wait. Also, yeah, I do have the Wii. Yeah, that's right. I do have. I have Mario Kart 64, and it plays fine. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, it sits on my desktop on the Wii in the Wii Shop menu or whatever. Yeah. Wow, it's been a long time since I played that. <sighs> homebrew the ship. Yeah, my my Switch is now homebrew the ship. Like all the games. Of course plug in usb and done so some of you some of you old 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 timers probably remember a screen like this whenever you were to quit a game like wolfenstein or or doom it always taught you a little bit a little bit right it'll say some shit like like this well go click your icons then or, oh, yeah, you being a bitch or something. Basically, they, they call you a bitch, a little bitch. And then they, then you close out, right? You remember this shit, right? So this is the, this is the, this is the old and busted, old and busted way of doing it. Of taunting your players. Well, the new, new hotness is emailing them directly and saying it was amusing to watching you fail Says, hola, Rojas. I wanted to thank you for giving me free reign in Yara. Take it easy and know that Yara is in capable hands. Surely you could do better than this. Three hours time played. <laughs> thank you, Woofy, by the way, for the for the, for the the insight on this one. Um, this is the new way. This is the new way. They'll just email you directly with your own stats. <laughs> with your own stats and shove it back in your face. So... So this, this, uh, uh, Brandon, Brandon Sinclair, a lot of games are already ruthlessly designed to maximize engagement, but now they email and hassle you if you dare stop playing them. So, uh, yeah. So like, like RWM says, he says like, that's a one way ticket to a blocked email. You can also unsubscribe, but like personally, oh yeah, unsubscribe if you don't like it. It's not really that big of a deal. I just thought that the parallel between this and the way we've always done in the past is hilarious because this is not the only time. Like, there's other game companies that'll reach out and they'll say, we're doing like a free-to-play game. Anybody who's ever played a free-to-play game, literally ever, you've got nonstop emails about how they miss you and how you should come back and how there's a bonus. Or how about anybody who's ever ordered any fucking weed delivery? You got texts out the ass all the time. Oh, Amuse, we dropped off $30 into your account. Oh, you can refer a friend. Oh, you can, here's $10 off your next pre-roll. Like this is the way marketing works. I just love that they use your actual in-game stats against you. Surely you could do better than this. Three hours time play. <laughs> Blizzard still does it with WoW. Do they? Yeah, that's right. They used to show you your character. They used to send you Blizzard. I don't know if they do it now, but Blizzard used to send you an email, talk about how much they miss you and all that shit, right? And they would have a, like a like a like an armory screenshot of your uh, image of your player. Uh, I think we covered it on a legendary issue actually, or uh, issue uh, uh, episode. How funny. Um, moaning about having to deal with spam, but gets weed delivered. <laughs> I'm not worried about it. Not me. I I'm good. I'm go I get so much spam. I don't, I don't even, I don't even, <laughs> I see right through that shit. But yeah, I, yeah, I, I got those Blizzard emails long ago. How funny. It was, yeah, it was on Ledger EP. That's so funny. Wow. Yep. They're still doing it. <laughs> They're still doing it. It's just how they work, man. They got, they got, they got to find some way to get you to play the games. That's all. Lastly, lastly, we got some sad news. Pack South 
is no more. For the indefinite future. Indefinite. Not defined. So for a not defined amount of time, we're not going to have any more Pack South in San Antonio. That's, this just came out today. It's right before the show. Uh, so it says, when PAX was per, when PA, first, first PAX was held in 2004, we expected almost at most 100 locals to show up. Never in our wildest dreams would we anticipate more than 3,000 passionate fans to arrive uh, or for our one-time event to turn into a series held in five cities around the world. And so they go on to talk about how how uh, awesome it was to have it there. And then it says, uh, faced with that reality, compounded by the impact of COVID-19, um, and this pack South hasn't expanded to some to some extent and has remained the same show that it was when we opened in 2015. And then it says they made a difficult decision of bringing pack South to an end for the foreseeable future. Um, to quote Jeremy, Cole, oh no, anyways, well maybe to you guys, who you can't just like jump on a train and just end up in in Texas. <laughs> but for us, for me, I I've been to pack South a couple times, going down there and hanging out with with Tan Rose and Woovy and fucking everybody else that was down there. Fucking dark forsaken coming down from like New York or some shit. Like, yeah, man, it was cool. It was cool. Going out drinking with my buddy Doc. It was good shit, man. It was good shit. Uh now I just have to go out there. <laughs> not not just gotta go out there. I mean, I didn't really go for the show. I went for the hangout and drink and everything. And it takes some nudes. Checking out the basement of the Alamo. There's no basement in the Alamo. <laughs> Uh, when's phony con after the pandemic uh, <laughs> if it ever ends that's it for news thank you so much everybody for watching I have to get out of this thing <sighs> stars and so big deep in the heart of Texas <laughs> I got the whole movie memorized don't even try me with that all right don't even try me with that. Anyways, thank you everybody so much for joining me today on this news, special news. Appreciate you. It's special. The Halloween news. That's right. There you go. Whoopee. Oops. <laughs> Chat, hang out. Say goodbye to YouTube. Bye, YouTube. <laughs>